Okay, today's lesson is on Geographer Tools. Introduction. What do you think of when you hear the word geography? Some people could think it refers to the location of different countries in the world. Others might think of different mountains or rivers that they have heard of throughout their lives. The subjects listed above are only a small fraction of the material that geography includes. Geography covers a wide range of focuses and topics. People have a strong knowledge of geography will be able to analyze the cultures, economic patterns, and climates in a region. For instance, understanding geography would not only help a person locate a mountain range on a map, but it would also show what effect that mountain range has on local industry and culture. Geography is crucial to comprehending your surroundings and the world at large. This lesson will provide you with key points about geography. These points will allow you to identify, understand, and explain the principles of geography. And the uses of geography. Who uses geography? It is only useful to a small group of scientists who work in a lab or make maps all day. The answer is no. Um, almost everyone benefits on a daily basis from geography, even if they have only a limited knowledge of the subject. One of the most common uses is street directions. At some point in your life, at some point in your life, um, someone has asked you how to get somewhere. It is likely um, that the car in which you travel has a road atlas or some other sort of map. Atlases contain many different maps within a single book. Geography, like a, any social science, has many subfields. Among these are um, cartographic, cartography, cartography, um, and meteorology. Um, as you see, the products of these two professions um, frequently throughout your life. Um, for example, if you ever seen a map, it is created uh, by a cartographer. Is it cartographer? Cartographer. All right, cartographer. They use many sources of data to create a um, variety of maps, including physical, political, and uh, special purpose maps. They pull from a large variety of data in order to create each map, and this will be discussed in more detail later in the lesson. All right, so meteorologists. These guys, uh, they predict the weather if you ever watch um, the news or the weather. If you got the weather app, these guys... Um, I'm going to study the weather. It's a scientific study of the Earth's atmosphere, especially the climate and weather. Um, they use geography to forecast weather in a particular region. They gather information from computers, radar, satellites to make more accurate weather predictions. And these technologies inform meteorologists of weather phenomena such as temperature prediction, although they do not always accurately predict the weather. Sometimes they don't. Um, meteorologists today are more, far more accurate than previous generations. Imagine your life, how your life would be affected if you did not know if a hurricane or a blizzard, um, was about to hit your town. Most likely you would be caught completely off guard. I know this summer I did not check the weather. A severe storm was coming in and a tornado ripped through my town and I was almost caught in it. And I was also driving my daughter, so that could have, uh... Taking us both out. Anyway, you would likely be without the need of supplies such as food and water um, to weather a storm. Your local government would also be unprepared and many um, may not have the necessary equipment ready to clear the roads and fix any damage that the storm might cause. This could add delays to the recovery period and could seriously disrupt your community daily activities. So if you didn't know what type of weather was coming, some pretty serious weather, you'd be in a lot of trouble. All right, throughout the course, throughout this course, you'll be exposed um, to four additional subfields of geography in greater detail. These subfields include climate and weather, physical geography, human geography, 
resources and land use, climate and weather. This includes tropical weather patterns um, and vegetation features, physical geography, examines land and water formations, uh, human geography, analyzes and shows human populations and cultures, and resources and land use, examines what humans do to land and the natural wealth it contains. Human geography and physical geography are often considered the main two branches of geography. Physical geography is closely tied to Earth's weather and climate patterns. Likewise, um, the topics of resources um, and land use primarily to discuss human consumption patterns and thus are closely related to human geography. All right, global organization. One of the most accurate depictions of the Earth is a globe. This is because a globe um, better represents the actual dimensions of the Earth to scale. The information presented on a map, however, is distorted because the map is flat and cannot truly depict the spherical shape of Earth. Globes typically display political or physical map information. Political maps emphasize the boundaries of various countries such as territories on earth. These boundaries are human-made ones such as the borders between nations and states. Um, uh, physical maps detail land formations such as mountains, rivers, and plateaus. Many globes are referred... Many globes are relief style which depicts elevation um, three series of raised areas over higher land masses in the world. Regardless of the type of globe, they all usually show the Earth's seven continents. They also show the five major oceans. Examine, um, examine the world map to see where each continent and ocean is located. Even though globes represent accurate depictions of the Earth, they do have their disadvantages. The foremost is that globes are bulky and are not easy to transport from one place to another. They are also not practical for examining a small area in the Earth. Imagine the problems you would have if you tried to navigate your local town using a globe. It would be nearly impossible um, with most globes. All right, map organization. A map may be useful alternative when a globe is not practical. Maps are lighter and are much easier to transport. You can easily fit hundreds of maps in a small almanac in your car. Also, a map you can examine a small area in much greater detail than you could to a globe. The main problem with maps are uh, main problems with maps, it's also directly related to their size and shape since maps depict um, a round earth on a flat surface. They are bound to be distorted. Many different types or map projections have evolved because of this. Some distort different features of the earth more than others. In fact, um, cardiographers um, must carefully think about which type of projection um, to create beforehand so that the distortions do not adversely affect the purpose of the map. All map projection systems use the same data and map the same earth, but each system values one factor, area, direction, and proportions uh, more than others. This often has a radical consequence for how a person perceives the world. All right, the McCantor Project shows accurate dimensions of one location relative to another. This results in large um, this results in large um, use of area. Um, the lands closer to the equator are more accurately shown than lands further than from the equator. So for example, of what I'm talking about, Antarctica is shown much larger than it actually is. Um, so it's not actually this big 
it's actually smaller and it's more round. This is because Antarctica is located at the South Pole and thus it's distorted on this map. Uh, nonetheless, a ship captain can use this projection to accurately navigate across the sea um, because the directions between any two points are accurate. Um, so they still would be able to navigate around this area if they needed to, but that's going to take a lot of studying um, and knowing how to read a map. This type of projection will be used most often in this course, so like looking at a map this way, not a globe. All right, the Robinson Project. The Robinson Project um, distorts all areas and shapes a little. However, the overall distortion is low. The projection is um, a compromise between not completely disorienting the land and having correct direction. It does not get um, any direction areas or shapes absolutely correct. It does not get them horribly wrong either. No projection from a three-dimensional globe to a two-dimensional map can get all the directions, areas, and shapes correctly because it's not a sphere, it's a map, it's flat. All right, so some projections are interpreted, meaning they are separated into sections to interpret um, the shapes of the land. Um, and then this top one, Sinusotodal, that's a hard word to say. Um, you can see that it, dis it distorts the shape of the land. Um, the Peters projection, so we're, I mean, these are all different types of different maps. Um, the 2D, two-dimensional maps um, that we're talking about here, obviously. Recently, the Peters projection had gained popularity. And how the world is viewed, the map presents an area um, in the correct proportions. All right, so these are in the correct proportions. So America compared to what Africa is and um, like what Australia is compared to like South America. So this is the, this map has a projection, um, an accurate projection of what the comparison sizes of on a map as opposed to like a political map might be a little off. Maybe, it, maybe it's not, maybe it is. Um, Cause sometimes, um, when you look at maps, they are distorted if it's a political map. Um, one country might look bigger than what that actually is compared to another one. So oftentimes you will notice lines that run horizontally across a map, horizontally. They are called lines of latitude. You will also notice lines that run vertically on a map. These lines are longitude. Lines of latitude and longitude are used to locate a, um, a coordinate. A coordinate can help pinpoint a specific location, also known as absolute uh, location on Earth. And today, many people use GPS devices to get their exact coordinates on Earth to navigate to their destination. So if you're going to a restaurant or if you're going down the street, or if you're going to a friend's house, you might use a GPS. Google Maps or Apple Maps, those are coordinates. All right, another method for finding a location on a map is by using its um, relative location. You probably have used relative location for many times in your life without even realizing it. For example, if, if you knew someone or someone asked you um, where your school was, you might respond, it's a half mile down the road from Joe's Pizza. In this case, you used another landmark to describe the position of your school with the map of Costa Rica to your right. You could easily describe the relative location of what is that? Liberia um, by saying it is north of Nicole, Nicolier and south of Nicaragua. Okay, yeah. So you can pinpoint Costa Rica. So it's above Panama, but it's below Nicaragua. All right, a couple more slides and we're almost done. All right, special purpose maps. Political and physical maps are the most common types of special purpose maps. Uh, there are other types of maps um, besides these two. Um, each portrays a, a specific piece of information such as precipitation, 
and its distribution over a given area. Because so many topics within geography are interrelated, special purpose maps are useful when comparing data. For example, elevation um, topography largely affects the amount of forest cover that um, is in an area or an area has compared uh, compare the maps to the right to demonstrate this fact for the state of California. What type of elevation do areas um, with a lot of forest cover have? Um, what about the areas with little or no forest cover? That would probably be the desert area if you don't have any forest cover. Um, so there are many types of special purpose maps that you will encounter in your daily life. One of these, a road map, was already mentioned earlier in this lesson, and you can um, identify a map's purpose by carefully examining all the information within the map. All right, each map type... Um, all right, that's an activity. We don't need to do that. Let's just drag each map type. All right, additional map features. If you have already been exposed to some basic geography terms of maps and globes, such as latitude and longitude, there are several other essential features of maps and globes that you should be aware of and know how to identify by examining these elements, you will gain greater understanding of any map or globe that you use. The basic line of latitude that separates the north and southern hemispheres is known as the equator. I'm sure some of you have heard of the equator. It's very hot by the equator. It has a location of zero uh, latitude. Likewise, the primary, the primary line of longitude is known as the prime meridian. The prime meridian separates the globe into the eastern and western hemispheres and is located at zero longitude. Many maps are, many maps also contain a legend. A legend identifies key features or details on a map that is often essential to find the identity of the item within the legend. Without understanding these items, you may miss key information displayed on the map. Another common feature in a map is a compass rose. This helps you determine the direction of the map. A compass rose is especially helpful on maps of small areas in which direction is not easily identified. Scales are also important to these types of maps. They help explain the size and distance displayed on the map. You may also come across an inset map. An inset map helps the reader identify where um, a smaller area such as a city or a country is in relation to a larger region in the world. Cardiograms. Cardiograms are another useful tool for um, presenting geography data. The cardiogram is a type of map that uses a um, variable other than area to display countries. In other words, most other forms of maps attempt to make the land appear as they would in real life with as few distortions as possible. Cardiograms, cardiograms, not cardio, cardiograms, are more concerned with representing variables such as um, regions uh, GDP, which is the gross domestic product. Uh, population growth, disease cases, and military spending. So it's all based on data. Um, the example shown, these are two different depictions of North America. The top image is a typical area map. As in any map, there are some distortions, but they are reduced as much as possible. Thus, the image depicts the shape of North America almost as it actually appears. The image below, um, below the area map is a cartogram um, based on total population. Oh, okay, see, so check this out. The bigger uh, the country's population, the bigger it appears on this type of map. Notice how the northernmost country, Canada, appears much um, larger in the area map um, than in the cartogram. This is because 
Although Canada has a large landmass, it has a small population. And due to this fact, it is depicted much smaller in the cartogram. And these are useful for transforming tables of data, like I said, into geographic displays. And throughout this course, you'll be exposed to many different types of maps and other means of organization information. One such example is the population pyramid. A population pyramid is a type of graph that shows the percent of people living in a country separated by age and gender. These pyramids are useful for determining how a population is um, in a given region is changing over time. For instance, these population pyramid examples show that uh, Zambia in the year 2007 had a much greater number of children ages four and under than they did adults and Germany in 2007 on the other hand uh, has less number of children than adults. A country could experience population growth for a variety of reasons. For instance there could be changes in death rate or birth rate. When a death rate falls more people are living to older ages when birth rates raise, this means that there are more babies being born. Either of these factors can increase the population growth, a population pyramid with all lines appropriately the same length indicates a relatively stable population. Regions. Regions are important to tools that geographers, geographers use to organize different areas of the world. They are also central theme of this course, and any given area may fit into several regions. This is because a region contains at least one defining characteristic that separates it from the surrounding areas. For example, Pittsburgh um, is a part of the region called the Rust Belt, and the Rust Belt is a region in the United States with many old factories that have been shut down. Hence, they are rusting away. However, Pittsburgh is also included in the region of North America because it shares a common culture with that area. And Pittsburgh would be classified as belonging to a formal region since the Rust Belt has a um, distinguishing characteristic that separates it from the surrounding areas. There are two types of regions that geographers sometimes use. The first is a functional region. A Functional region consists of a series of different areas that function together in a single unit. For example, the bus loop is a uh, fictional region because it links many stops together in the same system. A large example of a functional region is a met metropolitan region, such as a large city like New York or Los Angeles. These areas are functional regions because they are physically linked by a number of things, including mass transit, highway systems, and a third type of region is perceptual reason. And, and as the name suggests, um, this is affected by human perception. What images come to mind when you hear the phrase back home? Your idea of back home is probably different from those of your peers or me. It is certainly different from someone raised in another part of the country might imagine. Therefore, back home is a perceptual region. All right, a couple more slides here. The tools of the 21st century, geographer tools, progress with the growing use of computer technology, the internet and satellites, one of the most significant geography technology achievements came in the late 20th century when the development of the GPS system came into play. And this pinpoints the user's exact location. It used to be a military tool, but now it is a civilian tool. Um, it also helps um, people in the maritime world, which is navigation for sailors, fishermen. Um, so it pinpoints your location, where you are in the world, um, just with the press of the button, as long as you can hook up to the satellite or the internet, and you can tell where you're at, and you don't need a map. Okay, so the introduction to new technologies into the world geography has provided geographers, government officials, and teachers with other useful new tools at their disposal. For instance, 
um, the GIS, Geographic Information System, refers to a computer software that is used by capturing, storing, checking, and displaying data related to positions of the Earth's surface. GIS images show various data on one map with information displayed in layers. Technology such as this allows people to view geography information in innovative ways. Uh, six essential elements. The study of geography can be broken down into six essential elements. Each element describes a specific aspect of geography and it is important to understanding the entire picture. Also, each element enhances and adds a level of understanding to the other five. The world's spatial term, places and regions, uh, physical systems, human systems, environmental and society and uses of geography. We will get to all of these in previous, I mean, not previous, um, future lessons. Um, the world in spatial term focuses on uh, physical placement of geography features and the use of maps and globes um, is essential to understanding this element. Places and regions, they examine the common characteristics, common characteristics of regions, including... Um, Human aspects. Culture is also important in this element. Physical systems. Uh, this element includes the process and patterns that shape the world's surface. Human systems focuses on migration, distribution, and settlement of humans. Um, humans moving around the world and populations. Environmental and society examines the impact of human actions on the environment and uses of geography. The ability to use uh, this element is demonstrated by the use of geography to interpret and present past events to plan for the future. All right, summary. Each tool of geography, whether it is a globe, special purpose map, cardiogram, uh, population pyramid, serves a specific function. Each also has its own strengths and weaknesses. Um, through careful use and examination of these tools, you will gain a greater understanding of the six essential elements to geography. In this lesson, you have looked at jobs such as cardiograph, a meteorologist, um, cartographer, sorry, I keep messing up that word. And they, they both use um, geography, both of those um, career paths. Um, you also saw how geography encompasses more than uh, topography. This includes relationships between geographical regions and the economics, uh, population, and culture of people who live there. Studying these uh, relationships can help us better understand how people interact with the world. Um, geography has many practical applications. Recent advancements in technology and, and geography, sorry. Recent advancements in geography, such as GPS, have allowed for better um, means of exploration. Hikers, meteorologists, military, for example, rely on geography to navigate the modern world. And that is your lesson for today. I know it was a long one. Take care. Peace out.